Amrva, a city founded by a Muslim king, later becoming the home of Gandhi as he broke barriers between the Hindus and the Muslims. There's a warmth in the eyes of the people here that you won't find anywhere else. You would have no idea what was brewing beneath it all. In 1947, India got its freedom from the British rule. The country was divided into two. The predominantly Muslim-dominated states became Pakistan, whereas the Hindu-majority states remained India. Thousands of Hindu families were forced to leave Pakistan to avoid persecution. Some Muslims left India, but there were many who chose to stay in the great secular democracy of India. Farzan, give me your radio. They live in India and cheer for Pakistan. <laughs> they want to see fireworks. We'll show them fireworks. Ahmedabad? Bairampura, Jamanpura, Juwapura. In Barzania, you could listen to cricket whenever you want and not get into trouble. Really? Is Barzania beautiful? Of course. The buildings are made of chocolate. The rooftops are made of halwa. The rivers are made of keel. The mountains are made of ice cream. Chocolate ice cream? Chocolate, strawberry, tutti frutti, any flavor you like. And we can eat it? Of course. One minute, one minute. Yes, Dr. Jagaman, good morning. He just called. He will be here any minute. The American? Yeah. Alan is his name. Well read. Intelligent for an American. <laughs> I think he's finishing his uh, thesis on Gandhi. Unique. Very young. That's Alan. <laughs> if you make a wish at Lake Virginia, will your wish come through? Of course, 100%. But you have to pray like me. Rumble, mumble, do not tumble. God, this is your servant, humble. Pray, come on. Rumble, mumble, do not tumble. God, this is your servant, humble. Achamani, pachamani, anderi, ganderi, Dilshad dear is very hungry. Close your eyes. Open them. That's Farzan, <laughs> my son, with the cap. Who? And Dilshad, my daughter, and my wife, Shanaz. Ah, beautiful. What about you? Are you married? No. I just broke up with someone, actually. A psycho. Dude, never date a hippie. Please, you can't drink in here, Alan. <laughs> Nor anywhere else in Gandhi State, for that matter. Yes, yes, I know. Please, Alan. I love that about Gujarat. <sighs> Lots of poverty, no booze. Who's this, Allah? No, oh, that's Zarathustra. I'm a Parsi, not a Muslim. Parsi? <laughs> we are like the Jews of India. Oh, so you own the theater then? No, no. Ooh. That was a joke. Oh. What about you? Are you Jewish? Christian. Father, son, and holy goat. <laughs> Bye. Last one over the silly goose. You are a silly goose. We are back. Hi, Bitty. You're just in time. Bitty, please go to Sheila, Auntie. And tell her Mama wants lemon and get it. Please, baby. Okay. Should 
never seen the look on their face when they saw me. They really? Never... <laughs> uh, oh, what oh, happened? No, this guys have to get over today only. Ah, so bright chagan, no? I tried. No, now we are out for two days. More like two weeks. The shortage has never been so bad. I wonder why, really. <laughs> My mommy wants to borrow a lemon. <laughs> I know, I know. Thank you. I told her she would need more than that, but she never listens to me. Nobody ever listens to me, not even my husband. <laughs> I've never heard that before. <laughs> it's your only job? This? No, no, no. I work in a cinema. I have to earn some bread also, you know. <laughs> what about you? How's India been treating you? People have been way too nice. <laughs> Just because you're white. You must be thinking you had lots of money. Uh, sure, so doesn't seem to be a lot of that floating around here. No, there is. It's just that a few people have most of it, that's all. Same shit in the States. At least you don't have people killing each other for no reason. You gotta be kidding me. Oh, oh shit. We got three times the homicide rate as India, man. It's a hell of a lot easier getting your ass shot off in L.A. than Bombay. Must be those horrible movies that you keep seeing. Now you put all these pebbles in a straight line and I'll show you how to enter Parzinia. Okay. Go. Mmm, lovely, lovely. Mm. Sheila's ran out of gas again. Oh, she's going to be in problem now. Because there's a gas strike going on. Yeah, and she wants you to make six rotis for her. So, Sheila, like, you ask for one life, you make six rotis. If I ask for rice, she's going to ask me to paint her house. <laughs> I tell you, I remember that day, I asked him for something. Shadrach. <laughs> this is how you enter Parzania. I promise to abide by the laws of Parzania. I promise to abide by the laws of Parzania. To put cricket before anything else, including pudding and pebbles. You must obey. To put cricket before anything else, including pebbles? Pudding and pebbles. Pudding and pebbles. Now keep repeating after me. I enter this land. I enter this land. With the knowledge that I may eat the buildings. With the knowledge that I may eat the buildings. But not within five minutes before it is supposed to rain. But not within five minutes before it is supposed to rain. Now hold this like a parachute. What do you want me now? Ready? Ready? Three, two, one. Now jump! <laughs> we are now entering Pazania! Yay! Jaldi, chalo, jaldi! Chalo, jaldi! Hey, stop, stop! Hey, chalo, wapas karo! Is that a rakhi or a watch? It is a rakhi and you have to wear it on rakhi day. Only Hindus wear rakhis. I don't care. You have to wear it and also protect me for the rest of my life. I know what the rakhi is, okay? So don't bore me. Now you see what I'll do to you. You also have to give me a present. Sure. First of all, I have to wear that stupid rakhi, protect you and then give you a present. Bullshit. Mommy! Okay, okay, I'll wear the rakhi. Mommy, Parzan was listening radio in class. I'll protect you also. Mommy, teacher took his radio and gave him. Sure, sure. Hello, sure. beautiful girl. Ah. <laughs> See, Daddy, Rocky for Parzan. Oh, that's lovely. You mean it? Yes. Hmm? And he's going to wear it and also give me a present hmm? and also protect me for the rest of my life. That's my tiger. <laughs> ah. Chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I got today. <laughs> uh, one for you in this hand. Two, yes, we got two. Yahoo! Yahoo! Hmm. Go ahead and spoil them. Give them more chocolates. Hmm? Why? What happened? What happened? Do you know what your tiger did today? What? Stole the Taj Mahal. Ah, sorry. Huh? He was listening to the cricket commentary in the class. Hmm. 
Maybe we should make him a cricketer. Ah. Farzan Cyrus Pitawala, captain of the Indian cricket team. This is what happens. I can never make him study because you're all the time making a joke out of everything. Mm. <laughs> Must you renew our wedding vows every single day, sir? Every single day. Thrice a day. Mm. Mm. Before breakfast, mm. after breakfast, before lunch. And then, sir. <laughs> before lunch, after lunch, before tea and after tea. मुसलमानों का नाम खराब हो रहा है बताइए साहब कितने बेहूदे लड़के चलो चलो चाय पियो जल्दी छोटू आवाज मत कर सोरे दे चल Ten o'clock. You're getting late. Get up. Come. Oh. Oh. Ah. Oh. What? Nothing has happened. Oh. 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 Nothing. I can't even sleep. Let me see. I can't. Of course you can oh. sleep. Oh. Oh. Silence. <laughs> Come. Getting late. You have to go to work. Come, please. I don't want to work. I don't have to go to work. Hmm. Silence. You have to go to work. Oh. 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 You have to go to work. Oh, ever again. I don't have to go to work. Ever. Cyrus! You have to stay in bed with me. From this moment on. I'm getting late, man! <laughs> Your policeman friend is calling. Oh. <laughs> Come. Let him wait. Hmm? Are you coming or I should take a rickshaw? Hmm? Let him wait, man. Two minutes is coming. <laughs> what is your, your hurry, huh? All he wants is a free lift. <laughs> Come on. Sharnaz, yeah. Did Khan Agar tell you the news? What news? Nazneen is getting married. Oh, your niece? Yes, a nice Hindu boy. They met on the computer, you know. <laughs> tell you, internet has made the whole world such a smaller place. Gone are the days of Satish and Burka. <laughs> I know. <laughs> hey, Asif, when are you going to find a lovely little wife for yourself? Yeah, I keep asking you, no? <laughs> <laughs> I think we should get a computer. Huh? You need a lady friend. <laughs> <laughs> At this age, I don't need anything. Yes, you do. You remember this bed sheet? You liked it very much. I'm going to give you one on your birthday. Oh, so you remember that? Yes, I did. So sweet of you. Look, Chotu, I'm going to do a silly thing. Raja, take Lunga. Hey, Lunga. क्या यार परसान? Parzan, be careful, beta. Sorry, uncle. Dr. Jayaraman, where did you get this? Amazing. <laughs> this is my most prized possession. You know, one whole year I did not go to see cinema or eat out, just to save for this. <laughs> Whenever life seems to be too much to bear, yeah, I read this book. Right. This brings me back to life. <laughs> If you are going to break the law, it should not be for selfish reasons. Everyone here seems to. Uh, 
Helen, you are here to study Gandhi, not India. You need purity, not reactions made of anger. A healthy dose of anger is good from time to time. Sometimes you have to throw a punch to block one. An eye for an eye will make the whole world blind. Dream Bakery, Karani Cafe, Alnur Jewelers, Abbas Garments, Iqbal Automobiles. Know what I mean? Huh? <laughs> I can't wait to see all the amazing things you have done. ब्लैक क्यों करता है पूछता मेरे को पहले हफ्ते में पांच हजार बनेगा गारंटी तू सुधर जा छगन अभी भी टाइम है क्या रे गांधीवादी लोगों के साथ रह के तू भी एकदम गांधी बन गया है और कुछ चल हट तू जब जाना तो बड़ा अच्छा लगता है चल चल जा यहाँ से तेरे लिए फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ वो वैसे फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ दिखती अच्छा सुन अंग्रेज के पास भेजू नहीं नहीं कोई जरूरत नहीं जाए अरे बाबाजी तेरे लिए फ्री गेट लॉस Thousand years ago, our ancestors came from the holy land of Persia mm. in a big, beautiful, and a colorful ship. Titanic? It was not Titanic. Okay? Of course, it was. It wasn't. Ah. Hmm. And they came to Gujarat in India. When they came, the king of Gujarat was very concerned. Why was he concerned? He was concerned because there was no place for anybody else to come and live there. Mm. So he went to the priest, and he took. A bowl of milk, and he filled it up to the brim, and said, "Like this bowl of milk, we have no room." So you know what our priest did? What? Mm. He took a spoonful of sugar, he mixed it in the milk, and said, "Like the sugar that blends in the milk, we Parsis will blend with the Indians. So we will only sweeten your culture." And since then. The Parsis and the Indians have lived in peace and harmony. Okay, come, let's go to sleep. Come. Wow, one more story. No one stories more story. and no, no. studying gandhi hmm but why are you really here okay well uh it's a good question i was raised protestant 
actually. My Woo! father was a very well-respected pastor. <laughs> Never guessed that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, the genius level, you know. He, he could save the soul of anybody who walked through the door, but... Uh, Yeah, he, he uh, had a hell of a temper. He beat the shit out of this, man. So when I was 13, I was like, this, I, I don't have to live this way. And I packed my bags, and I'm leaving the house. He's chasing after me, and we head down the front steps. And he falls and hits his hard. So we take him to the hospital, and they do a CAT scan just to be safe and find out that he has a brain tumor. They yank the thing out, and guess what happens? All of the anger goes away. No more violence. Just like that. So you think it was the brain tumor that caused it? Well, I mean, that's what I thought at the time. Uh, so I'm like, who do I blame for my life of shit now? I can't blame him. Uh, uh, do I blame God? I mean, this guy was was God's biggest advocate, and he gets a brain tumor that causes him to bash his family. So I'm like, God, I go agnostic. I start drinking off just about uh, anything with a pulse. Whew. But, uh, you know, for years of that, I was miserable. And uh, I don't know, man, you know, nothing, nothing felt uh, trustworthy. I trusted my, my coke dealer more than I trusted the chicks that, you know. And then my brother comes to me, and he tells me that uh, the tumor had only been there for like two, three years tops before they removed it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, quite honestly, I think that it was the anger that created the tumor, not the other way around. You know, so I, uh, I stopped being a sort of. I cut back on the sauce and uh, went back to college, which is where I discovered Gandhi. And then I went back to church, which is where I discovered the same judgmental, hypocritical types I grew up with. And I figured that, you know, there's got to be a better way to live life than this. And that's when I decided to do my final thesis on Gandhi. Which brings me here. Mm -hmm. Get this. My thesis was due three months ago. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, here I am still drinking shitty bootleg liquor and uh, studying Gandhi. Uh, um. I guess. Come on. Cheers. Yeah, go easy on that stuff. You're going to catch yourself in early grave. <coughs> we Parsis don't have graves. <coughs> we Parsis don't have graves. Oh, you drink this stuff. <laughs> you know, when, when Parsis die, there's a fire ceremony. And then the body is put on top of a tower for the vultures to eat. Come on, you're kidding me. No, really. The body must be useful to someone or something, even after death. Life must return to the earth when it's over. <clears throat> the soul goes on, but the body stays behind to feed the earth. Parsis go all out, don't you? <laughs> Teachers look like donkeys. So class never gets boring because you're watching a talking donkey. <laughs> there is no place where teachers look like donkeys. Yes, there is. Where is Zenia? Shut up. She should not know. Where is Zenia? Hey, hey, stop. Can I see your license? Hurry up. Hurry up, hurry up. Hmm. Hmm. Where are you headed? Uh, school, sir. Got any Muslim kids over here? 
No sir, all Hindus. Yeah. What about this one? Sir, that's one very special pain in the ass Hindu, sir. But Hindu all the same. Well then, what are you waiting for? Do you want all our kids to be illiterate like Muslims? No, sir. No, sir. Come on, come on. Hey, Janu, let's go. Let him go. Everything seems fine, yeah? Elections are coming. They'll start a rift somewhere. As long as they don't create a rift between the public and the police, it's fine. Hey, Chotu. Hey, sir. Hey, tu. और सब बढ़िया और छोटू चाचा कैसा है छगन ने दिया क्या मेरे लिए कुछ अरे <laughs> मेरा सलाम बोलने का उसको ठीक है चल 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 We are conducting a census here. This hour? What religion are you? What caste? Satanic cannibalism. We eat census workers primarily. Can't you see this? Not a Hindu? Any Hindu is living in here? No, you want to move in? about Gandhi, a man who was able to unite the Hindus and Muslims for the cause of freedom and equality until some shit for brains right-wing Hindu thought the world would be a better place if he put a bullet through the man's stomach. Then a few idiot Muslims set off some bombs in Bombay in the early 90s and a new party plays it for all it's worth to get into power. And this party features many of the same types of superstar players as the one at Gandhi did. But now they were able to use a private group called the Parishad, which is India's own version of the KKK, to convince the Hindu population that they'd been repressed by the Muslims all along, even though Muslims make up less than 14% of the population, and most of them are poor as shit anyway. The Parishad, just like some of those idiot Southern Baptists with their burning crosses, love to pretend that theology supports their political agendas as if it's God's will to be... We don't need to take care of the people, we need to control them. And if using God to make them hate each other works, then so be it. Daddy, why are we Parsis and not Choto? <laughs> because we were born Parsi. And Choto is born Hindu. But you said there was only one God. Yes, there is only one God. Then how do you know that ours is real and his isn't? All gods are real. Hmm? Come on, come on, get some rest, Tiger. Uh, Daddy, I'll never listen to radio in class. That's my Tiger. <laughs> <laughs> Such 
turn the volume up on that? The radio volume up. This is unbecoming of any civilized society. It is something which can never be pardoned. I want to assure the people that Gujarat will not tolerate any such incident. The culprits will get full punishment for their sins. Not only this, we will set an example that nobody, not even in his dreams, thinks of committing a heinous crime like this. The Gujarati government shall safeguard the lives of common people and shall not allow those who want to take the law into their own hands to destroy the peace of innocent citizens. It is believed many women and children were also victims to this horrible crime by Muslim terrorists. Some locals even believe these women may have been used. Such culprits have no place in a civilized society. I appeal to you, with folded hands, we must maintain peace and self-restraint. It is our resolve to punish the culprits. No one will be spared. Parzan! Parzan, breakfast getting cold. Enough of the news. We don't know. Come on, let them listen to it. Let them know what's going on around them. Will someone tell us if we get on the train? No, sweetie. This happened in Godra. That is three hours away. Very far. Mommy, I wrote a poem. Uh -huh. Do you want to hear it? Yes, please. <laughs> Papa is strong and tall. Mm. Mommy is soft and helps when I fall. Sissy is silly and sweet. Uh -huh. And Papa has smelly feet. Uh -huh. <laughs> Whose tiger are you, Papa's or Mummy's? Uh, Mummy's. Oh, okay, I won't take you with me to the picture tonight. Okay, okay, Papa. Okay, okay, Papa. <laughs> Just joking. Tomorrow. Okay. You can come tomorrow. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Silly and sweet. Babal Thawani. Are you going to talk about the party? Who will come to see this film today? 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 ए न घरे आराम थी टांचिया लामा करी न आराम करी हो छूता हो गरम गरम बजिया बजिया खाता हो मजा करी हो यार ऐसा है पन बहुत चिकन आज हो शनाज शनाज यस निखर फोन फ्रॉम अमेरिका कम फास्ट ओके आई एम कमिंग दिलशान who Nikit ne gheer jaunch, after three whistles, just put off the cooker, samjhi ne? Don't forget, I'll just be back. Are you in a hurry? Yeah, telephone call. Movie ticket? Yes. A balcony? I'll remind you. Thank you, Shainaz Babi, thank you, okay. And this is a very important World Cup match between India and Pakistan, and it's going to end very interestingly. India needs 100 runs to win from just 20 balls. Finished? No, disconnected. Okay, okay while I'm waiting, give me tea. Come. Yes. Your special masala chai. Singing, I, I, P, P, I, I, P, I. And their champion batsman, Farzan, is at the crease. He's playing very well. Can India make it? Stay in your houses and do not come out. If you come out, we will be forced to fire. The police are in control of the situation and curfew has been declared. So remain calm and in your houses. Come on, let's go. Chalo, chalo. Time for kabi kushi, kabi gum. Come on, I'm telling you, grab the gates. Come on, you, you go over there and close the gates. Come on, you two go over there. Come on, Rahim. Go and check over there. What happened, Asit? Shanaz, Shanaz, go back home. Go back home. You go that side. Go that side. Go that side. Go and check over there. Uh, Nikhil, uh, Nikhil, just call up Silas. And this is the last ball. Going to be bowled by Shoaib Akhtar to Pajdan. 
If Farzan does not hit a six, India will lose this match. You go that side. Farzan and Dilshad are at home. Yeah. Look, we're just taking precautions. Why the gates are closed? Just as a precaution. I want you to stay at home with them. Go and stay at home with the kid. My son is over there. Please let me go from here. You see this road is blocked. You can't go from here. Inspector, please let me go. I need only to go. Go, go, You see this road is. You can't go from here. Go. Go. Sheila Ben, please open the door. I want you to take the children inside, Sheila Ben. Sheila, show me the children. Sheila, please. 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 Sheila, 
पानी खोल वाली ना पड़ी मेहता ने शीला बिल आई डोंट वांट टू कम इन आई जस्ट वांट यू टेक दिलशाद और फरजान इनसाइड अरे मुसलमान समझी ना अपने मारी नाशे तो अरे पर छोकरा ना ना अपने दिलशाद और फरजान वो खोलो ना 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 ये लोग को हिंदू नथी लेट्स गो is not in danger they are attacking buildings on the other side now you remain cool and everything will be okay but if i'm not in danger why don't you let me through
Orzan? Orzan, are you there? Orzan? Arzan? Arzan? Arzan! Dada ji take this back, but please bring Arzan back.
हाय मेरी बीवी आप लोग ढूंढते क्यों नहीं आए चक्कर काटते काटते थक गया हूं मैं जितना पैसा था सब दे दिया मैंने आपको आपको कोई लाभ नहीं है इंसान नहीं है आप भगवान है आप भगवान It is estimated that over 1,000 people have died in the Ahmedabad riots and over 100,000 people homeless as their houses were burnt or destroyed. The government claims that the police and fire was never... Begging of you, sir. Please help me. That chutney to deja yar le sundar chawali. Chutney, chutney. Sir. 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 Hey, chutney. Pure mu ka swad bigad gaya. Abhi ye dus din purani chutney leke aaye. Isse acha to main sukha ka leta. Chal nikal yaar se. Ab, ab. Get up. Chal aaye. Sir, please. प्लीज मेरी बात सुन सर मैं सन कौन नई बात है तो होता रहता है घर नाम क्या उसका फर्जा दिखता क्या है पापा इज स्ट्रॉन्ग एंड टॉल मम्मी इज सॉफ्ट एंड हेल्प्स व्हेन आई फॉल Sissy is silly and sweet, oh. and Papa has smelly feet. Whose oh. <laughs> tiger are you, Papa's or Mummy's? Uh, Mummy's. Oh, okay, I won't take you with me to the pictures when I go. Okay, okay, Papa. <laughs> okay, okay, Papa. <laughs> Just joking. Tomorrow. Then come tomorrow. Did that guy? करता हूं करता हूं ए
I haven't seen him. I know he's alive. Might be here somewhere, I'm not sure. Suleiman and Imtiaz. Keep my person safe. Wherever he is. I heard you needed some new books. These books are expression of my heart. You know, when someone hits you, it's human nature. You go on hitting yourself even harder. But that's not your way. Your way is this. This is your path. They want us to go to Pakistan. Why should we? This is our home. As much as theirs, no? You know, I watched my own father, who was my best friend and the most peaceful man I have ever known. And 
those who have committed these crimes. Our God is strong and powerful and has given us the strength to stand up to any evil. Whatever sacrifice we need to make, we must make it. We will make it. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. In the year 1919, the British government gunned down hundreds of men, women and children in Jallianwala Bagh. Gandhi took the gold coins given to him by the British for his work in South Africa and returned them with a letter. Do you know what the letter said? It said, I can retain neither respect nor affection for the government which has been moving from wrong to wrong in order to defend its immorality. The return of the coin was as large an action of disrespect as one could do. Gandhi saw terror all around him. But that did not make him become a terrorist nor did it make him go into isolation or self-destruction, which would have been natural impulse. It inspired him to take his war path of non-violence even further, focusing on those who really needed his help. Good news. You're lucky. Uh, please sit down. We'll look for your son. Entire police force will look for your son. Hmm. Sign it. What is this? Just a simple affidavit that we are helping you. Basically, to summarize it, riot overtook the building, and Hamare party worker uh, took control of the situation. Rescue from the writers. Our main part is It also says that you are giving us permission to look for your missing son. You need a child, right? You need a child. Sign it. a place to stay, not far from the mansion. We'll leave tonight with some of the others. I'll tell Sarah such a nice. They won't agree. But they're one of us. No? Only Muslims.
प्रसाद to it but uh, I'm getting it back to, to normal please come in the bedroom straight down the hall at the very end and the uh, kitchen is just to the left uh, it's the living room Yeah. Uh, I'll get you set up in the, in the bedroom. Yes. It's, it's all right. Please. Please. Come on. Okay, top floor. So I have a mission for you. I want you to take this and throw it into the garbage in the kitchen, never to be seen again. Okay. You're the best. Cyrus? Can you tell me how many people died in Mohammadi mansion? I'd rather not talk about those things. I don't want any kind of retaliation. I just want to find my son. Let me see what we can do.
Parzan? They found him. He's at the station right now. Okay, okay. Big shot. No, 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 go. Go, okay? I'll take care of her. Your son. Jabat. This is not my son. Where is my son? लेकिन इसका नाम तो परदान है. This is not my boy. Where is my son? You said you had my son. You can't find one child. It's because you don't care. Nobody cares, Aris. Parzu, क्या जे? No, I'm not leaving this place without my son. No, you bring me my son. I want my Parzan back. You bring me Parzan. You have searched on land. Now search with the spirit. Ask Gaura Mustafa for his guidance, and he will guide you. I think you must go for complete purification. That brings Mustafa closer to you. There are three steps on this purification. Wearing your sudrain kusti. Secondly, you must have sacred bath. Cleansing yourself of tushmata, tujukta, tujwasta, bad thoughts, words and deeds. And thirdly, you should go for complete seclusion for nine days and nine nights. At the end of all this, you ask Mazda, and you will get all your answers. Okay. The dam me kala kapla rasi dekho kitna hai. Abi Rahim. असला कितना है अपने पास तीन डजन ठीक है जरा ध्यान से रखो कैरोसिन छिड़कना नहीं चाहिए हाँ जी उस्मान तलवारें कितनी है बहुत अच्छे हाँ जरा खान की मदद करो वहां जाके हाँ और इसकी जरा धार तेज करवाओ इसकी अपने को बहुत जरूरत पड़ने वाली है अभी The question which both opposition parties and the public are asking is why the army was called 72 hours after the riot broke out in Australia. The National Human Rights Commission has also stepped in and is investigating the issue. They are to submit a report to the state government about their findings. It is believed that 100,000 Muslims have been homeless since February 28 riots all over Gujarat. Reports of an evening meeting called by the Chief Minister on the day of the Godhra carnage in which he instructed senior police officials to allow people to vent their frustration over the torching of the two coaches of the train surfaced today. He allegedly ordered the police to not come in the way of any Hindu backlash. There's no backlash, and people are starting to figure it out. They act as if this was just a natural reaction to Gadra, but you tell me how you could mobilize a hundred thousand citizens with swords and trishuls and pipe bombs within 24 hours. How did the men have all the voters' lists so they knew exactly where all the Muslims lived? Why were the names of every Muslim business in the area run in the newspaper with their addresses not long before? Why were flags distributed systematically to all of the Hindu-owned businesses before Gadra had even occurred? I'll tell you why. This riot wasn't a riot. It was a planned act of genocide. It is our resolve to punish the culprits. No one will be spared. Here to testify. Okay, we're not alone. What happened? Hmm? Hmm? What happened, nothing? It's 
to Valkyrie. Hmm. So you do one thing, you make a Rocky for him and give it to him when he comes back. When he come back? After nine days. Nine days? Just nine days. Only nine days. How can he do this to him? How can he do this? Hello? Listen, you. We know where you're staying. You so much as return to the phone call from the NHRs, you'll speak to another soul about anything. We will cut you into bits and pieces. You got the wrong. Away from the hearing, you understand? It's wrong number. I'm going to go away by myself. Also, so that I I can become as pure as I can for God. Hmm? At the end of those nine days, we will get our answer. Sleep. I keep imagining all these horrible things happening. You know, if you go without both food and sleep. Master. Sintuk pintuk tangan pai, save my person from the evil light.
Farzan Cyrus Pitawala, captain of the Indian cricket team. Must you renew our wedding vows every single day, sir? Every single day. Me. Cyrus, where are you? Cyrus, I know this is important for you, but Dilshad really needs you. So come back home, please. Darling, I, I come home two days time. यहाँ से हम नरोड़ा जाएंगे नरोड़ा से शाहपुर काफी लंबा रास्ता है और इस असली को भी ऊपर ही रख दो तलवारें संभाल के रखो भाई सुनिए आप लोग जरा जाके पांच मिनट चाय पी के आइए ध्यान से यू नो दिस इज इंट राइट वॉट दे डिड वॉज राइट वाई यू डिफेंडिंग द हिंदूज It was a Hindu man who saved my life, Asif. And it was Hindus who killed my father. They butchered him, Nikhil. They butchered him. They tore him up. Why? For no reason. He was seventy-five years old. What harm could he have possibly done? 
Nikah, they took him from me. They deserve this. And you don't tell me that they don't deserve it. How can you pretend that the Hindus you're going to kill are the same ones that killed him? I don't care. You don't care? Okay. What if you do it? You do it. What happens after that? Tell me, have you thought about that? Nothing will have changed us if nothing. If you want to hurt them, fine. Go after the ones who did it. Not with a sword. Not with a sword, Asif. We are gathered here today to hear the testimonials of both the victims and law enforcement officials regarding the events that took place on 28th February 2002. It should be noted that this is not a criminal proceeding. However, the findings of this board will be presented to the government and recommendations on how to proceed with criminal prosecution will be made. Could you please describe for us the events you saw on February the 28th? Yes. There was a small group of people fighting outside our home. A small group? Yes. Uh, Muslims and Hindus were fighting each other. Were the police present? Not at first. Uh, no. And when did they arrive? Uh, not long after it started. They broke it up. Thank you. You may take a seat. Officer Shastri, when you heard the violence erupting, what orders were you given? We were ordered to fire at anyone who did not cooperate. And uh, what did you personally do? I followed the orders and broke up the violence. What do you want me to do? When you asked police for help, what did they do? The, the police saved our lives along with Parishad workers. Uh, we wouldn't be here if it weren't for them. I swear, sir. I swear. I witnessed the police firing in, into the crowd of attackers to stop the violence. I was there in the cabinet, the prior evening, when our party workers and the Parishad workers tried to make special provisions for protection of Muslims. But unfortunately, not everyone can be controlled. Godra was a special act of terror. And the communities were bound to react. But the Parishad worked and helped very much. Police not only took us to the relief camp, but Commissioner Pandey himself addressed the angry crowds. No, there were no charges of rape filed within my district. I sit here watching the strongest woman I have ever known, understanding that the Lord only gives a person a burden that they are strong enough to handle. Mommy? That the burdens must fall somewhere in this world, and when they fall on you, it is not just a test, but a symbol that life knows you have the strength to endure them. Never in my life would I have guessed that religion could be both the cause of the problem and the solution.
Chagan, could you describe to us the events that you witnessed on 28th February? Groups of Hindus were moving in various parts of our neighborhoods. And they were carrying a lot of weapons, like swords, fire bottles, and thrishuls. Uh, were there any police officers present? Yes. And what did they do in response to the violence? They said that we have no orders to help you. Excuse me? To the Muslims, not myself. And what did you do? What could I do? It was a huge mob, and they were threatening to kill me. So I told them that I'm a Hindu, and showed them the places where the Muslim lived, and they went and killed. I did this to save my own life. Did you attack anyone? No. But it's the same thing. I told them where the Muslims were. I might as well have butchered them all by myself. Uh, did you try to stop them? How could I? There was no way. <laughs> if you into where the bullets would fire at you. And the mob would threaten to kill you. <laughs> so I just stood there. And watched the Muslim being raped. And butchered in front of my own eyes. Just like the police did. I don't deserve to be here. I don't deserve to be alive. Any more than this. Mess! Shashi, you were there during the events that Chagan has spoken of. Would you be able to confirm what he said as being true? Absolutely. Every word of it. When you asked the police for help, what did they say to you? We have no orders to help you. 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 We pleaded with the police officer for help. He showed us the newspaper with Godra on it and said, that's why, if your people hadn't done this, you would not face this. We were called and told us, if you testify... They would kill our families. I said you already have. The mosque was burning. And when I begged the police to call for help... They laughed and pushed me into the mob. We were told help would come. They sent no help sent a mob and stood there and laughed as we watched our loved ones getting butchered. I had 10 ambulances ready to go to the mansion because I personally received a call. The police blocked the ambulances and wouldn't allow us to help. One of the officers asked me, aren't you a Hindu? And what did you say? I said, yes, I'm a Hindu, but today I'm ashamed to call myself one. I loved watching my daughter laugh. And then before my own eyes, they, they did these horrible things to her. They, they put knives into her. And they, they laughed. They laughed. Allah, Allah. The Parishad showed up the day before to a house and says, we have to dig four graves in our yard. The next day, they showed up with four truckloads of dead bodies. Right to my house. Four truckloads. They pushed hundreds of people in the well. Filled it with kerosene. 
and then set them on fire. And what happened during the criminal pre-trial? All seven men were acquitted. And how did the acquittals come about? The prosecutor was a member of the ruling party and also had been charged with eight accounts of murder himself. As a resident of this area, I can honestly say that the policeman did a fine job working absolutely around the clock to provide security to the people. And who asked you to come here and testify today? The policeman from my area. <laughs> Your name, please? Shainaz. Shainaz Cyrus Pithawala. Can you please describe for us the events that occurred on the day of 28th of February? The police announced on the loudspeaker that we were safe and everything was under control. And? As soon as the police left, a huge mob broke into our society. How many? 5,000 to 10,000 people. What? Did she actually sit and count the people? <laughs> <laughs> they were coming from all directions and it was impossible to go anywhere. We could not defend ourselves. We had no weapons. We were middle-class families, depending on the police to protect us. And they did not do that. So now the police is involved? Yes. Sitting right here is Shankar, a police officer and my husband's friend. He himself attacked us and tried to kill us, just because we were not Hindus. There was madness everywhere. Doors that my children could walk through without knocking were shut on us. I begged and I screamed. I requested them to take my children in protect them but the doors remained closed then what happened I lost my son and how did you escape we ran from there but no place was safe and this was occurring outside your society it was all over the place the whole city even the fields we went to hide in were not safe they were pulling out people and killing them They stripped the men naked and cut them to pieces. Old, young, even the little ones. They threw it around. He didn't spare the unborn children. How was I to leave Dilshad alone in all this? And go and look for Barzan. I lost my boy. Your son is your responsibility. Don't talk to me about my responsibility. It was the government's responsibility to see to it that our families were safe and secure. But they did not do that. They failed to do that. Their family has been compensated. Ab kya what compensation are you talking about? Can money bring back those who we have lost? We are not talking table, chair and furniture. We are talking people. We are talking our lives, our loved ones. And money cannot buy that. No matter how hard we try, it will never be the same again. My family is strangled to a point where we have lost the ability to communicate with each other. My husband runs like a madman, searching from street to street. Every time he's called to identify a body, he hopes it's not our son. Yet he wants to find him in some form. Every day Dilshad is waiting for her brother to come back. She smiles because she knows I want her to be happy. Not because she is happy. She's never going to forget what she has seen all her life. The screaming, she has to live with that. For the rest of her life, she will be fighting the demons of what she has witnessed. All I wanted was to to love and protect my children and be with them for the rest of my life. And now what them is gone. I don't even know where he is. He's only 10 years old. He's 
fading away from our lives. And I don't want to live with his memories and pictures. I want him. I want to hold my person. I want to feed him. I want to scold him when he does mistakes at school. I want to hold him so tight that he's never lost again. Son has to come back wherever he is. No matter how long it takes, I'll wait. I'll wait. Just over two years after the Human Rights Commission's first hearings, the ruling central government of India was voted out of power. Cyrus is still searching for Parzan, and surely will never stop. As for me, I plan to turn my thesis into a book about a world where the buildings are made of chocolates the mountains made of ice cream, and no one's killing each other over religion. I'll call this book Parzania.